Live Laugh Larceny discusses true petty crimes that may be disturbing to some. Or could be easy listening to all you psychopaths out there. All stories are based on actual events. Eh, but details may vary. Listener discretion is not advised. Welcome to Live Laugh Larceny, the TikTok video that leaves you a stranger to the world. <laughs> this is Trevin. <laughs> and I'm Amanda. And Trevin, yes. what is your dreadful dilemma this week? You know, we've talked about marketing in different points in the show. Yeah. And I had the most genius marketing plan, but my dilemma is the fact that it might be unethical and <laughs> it might be hard to organize. Okay, do tell. Maybe we can help. Okay, <laughs> so I know you love some tea. Oh, do I? <laughs> <laughs> and you guys know I'm not talking London Fog. I mean, I love all varieties <laughs> of tea, but yes, go on. But I'm talking that hot goss. Mm-hmm. So recently I was on Facebook. It was one of those posts. Somebody was just dishing the hot ass piping hot tea. <gasps> To everybody. I'm talking undercover videos, screenshots, what? all of it out there. What? Like a cheating spouse? Or? Yeah. Oh my God. And all of these people are out of the woodworks, you know. Oh, I hope you're okay, honey. Oh, what do you need? What can we do? And then, of course, there's other people who are just like, hey, I hate you because I'm on that other guy's side and stuff like that. Oh, shit. And it hit me. This is the future of marketing. <laughs> There is no place that gets more eyes than when somebody spills a piping hot <sighs> serving of tea. That's really, really, really true. So I'm saying if any of you out there are about to just drop the H-bomb mm -hmm. of tea, reach out to me. I might get some ad space. You could have the screenshots and it's just like, oh, honey, I can't believe that you cheated on me with the whole Pilates class. But if you're looking for a comedy podcast, Live, Laugh, Larceny is the top choice. <laughs> That's actually brilliant. I am so on board. If any of our listeners are about to drop a big old bomb on Facebook, yes, please. We'll give you a couple links that you can add at the bottom of your post and we will pay. That would be some funny shit. And if you're in the process of a fight with your partner... <laughs> If you just go on ahead and plug our show in the middle of your fight for later. <laughs> like in the screenshots. Yeah, for later in the screenshots. That, <laughs> that is what we in the business call a baked in advertisement. And I will pay double for that. And we might multiply it if it goes viral. <laughs> it's like, I'm taking the dog. Live, laugh, larceny. <laughs> at gmail.com like, yeah wait what all your shit is burning on the front porch if you like scary stories without the scary stuff follow us on apple <laughs> or spotify wherever you get your podcast oh wow trevin that one really really got me but i think you're absolutely right and i know recently there was a real housewife that was going through a horrific divorce mm -hmm. and she kind of used it to her advantage and was like oh if you guys want to hear about what's going on in my life click the link in bio and it Good was like God. every click that this woman got Got was giving her that cash money. So mm -hmm. it's a thing. So before I jump into my dreadful dilemma this week, mm -hmm. it's been a hot minute since we have reintroduced ourselves to any new listeners. I know that we are constantly getting new ones. And if you're starting from this episode, hello and welcome. Yeah, I hope you enjoy yourself. We did want to kind of give just a brief little rundown of how each episode works. Bear with us. If you guys have been listeners from the jump, We'll try to explain it more differently if you'd like. Yes. How do we jazz this up for the people, Trev? So I've actually recently discovered with my way of thinking of the show is that we kind of modeled our show off of a variety kind of comedy show or like a skit show, like a Key and Peele or a Chappelle show or something, which is something I grew up with a lot. Yeah. Where 
they come out on the stage and they say a little something. Then it kind of warms everybody up and then they get into the main skits of everything. So uh, yeah. that's how I think of our first segment, Our Dreadful Dilemmas. Each week, Amanda and I share what's dreadful in our lives. And it's usually told from a bit of an overly dramatic uh, millennial <laughs> scope. <laughs> Definitely. Sometimes they're serious ones. Then we have a game segment in the middle where we share some sort of killer fact or would you rather or something like that. And then we get on to our stories which are fully produced movie versions of either petty crimes or listener stories. Or personal stories from time to time. Or personal. I know if you start from the beginning, that's what you're going to get a lot from me. My God. But those are a little more few and far between. You know what I love about our segment part is that we try and switch it up a lot. And we have a big variety. And I also have a couple new ideas, too, that I think we should do in the future. But I feel like we kind of catch up. Everyone gets to know us. We laugh at our stupid, miserable problem. And then <laughs> we give you a really weird, interesting fact. And then I feel like the rest is just sit back, relax, listen to this weird audio documentary experience about weird, petty crimes. Yeah. So hello. And here we are. Also, we call our listeners the Doomed Crew. So welcome. Welcome. And thank you for being here. So on to my dreadful dilemma, because I've got one, and it's something that I actually want listener participation in, in deciding, okay? Oh, okay. Because apparently my friend group is struggling with this question. I think I know what you're talking <laughs> about. <laughs> For everyone that already knows me, I love throwing murder mystery parties, Halloween parties every year. This year, I'm doing a murder mystery party with my friends, and I have two themes that I am completely stuck on. And it's honestly so dreadful, you guys, because I put out a poll with our close friends, and it's still a tied vote, and I just don't know what to do. And I'm honestly curious what the listeners would vote. Yeah, it's been neck and neck in the group chat. And <laughs> for anybody, I think Amanda might have explained this once. She does every other year as a murder mystery. And then yes. every other year on the opposite years is just a costume party. Yeah. So we don't just do it every Halloween. So it's right. a lot more exciting when you get to one. Yeah. But right now we're neck and neck. And I have chosen to be the spokesperson for one. <laughs> And Amanda's sister-in-law has chosen the one who was a part of Amanda's yay, yay video. The birthday, the yes. birthday girl in that video, yes. Her name is also Amanda, and <laughs> she is the spokesperson for the other. And I don't want to spoil what they are if you want to say uh, what they are. Yes. So the two themes this year, up for grabs, 80s prom or freak show slash circus theme. Okay? So Trevin has been very pro 80s, mm -hmm. very pro 80s prom. But recently, he kind of pulled back. I'm a little <laughs> confused. You were so, so for it in the chat. What happened, Trevin? Okay, so <laughs> other Amanda and I were duking it out. I'm sitting here saying, like, Madonna, seashell bras, cocaine, bad cars. And she's <laughs> saying, bearded ladies and mermaid women and, <laughs> and costumes and whatever. And yeah. we're just saying the words back and forth, trying to argue our point. Mm -hmm. And What happened? What happened to that spark? <laughs> so then I saw Amanda struggling. This Amanda here in the room with me today. Mm -hmm. You're like, it's still tied. Nobody's breaking the tie. <laughs> then the deciding people are sitting here being like, you know what? I may not be able to come anyway, so don't even count my vote. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, oh, Amanda's probably at home crying, <laughs> like throwing darts at the wall and smoking cigarettes. And so I thought, okay. I've got a pretty big year ahead. This year's big. Got my wedding, going out to Crime Con this year. This is a really big year, yes. And I've been on a mental journey. You know, I'm like, you know what? I could be somewhere pretty magical in two years. And so I thought, I think I would rather go 100% all out and feel just like a new me for 80s prom. Mm. That it's like, you know what? I think I can half-ass circus. The only thing, though, and I don't know if all of our friends know this, the main difference is the fact that if we're going to do freak show circus, characters have to be assigned beforehand. That's true. Because you're not just dressing for a vibe of like a decade or an event. You are dressing for a specific type of role. Mm -hmm. So that's my only hesitation. Is our friend group ready for the dedication? I'm going to be this particular role, you know? Well, you know what? This is almost like when a rock band comes out with a concept album. They're uh, like, oh, this is my spacey one where the whole thing is just based off of lyrics by C.S. Lewis or something yeah. like that. 
And this is your chance to do the same thing and just be like, you know what? I've never done something as ambitious as Freak Show, but if right. you're going to do something different, let's blow the whole damn thing up. Right. And let's try it because there's been times at your parties where I leave and say, I think I would have done better had I knew who I was going to be a little earlier. Try that format while trying this new thing and just go full blown concept and just see what you liked and what you didn't like on both. And if it's just a theme problem, then you tried with the cool idea. That's very true. That's very true. And my sister-in-law pointed out, I already have a disco theme. Don't get me wrong. I think 80s and disco totally different, but I do have 20s. I do have disco. And then I would have another decade where if I did this one first, it is more variety. So I get that. And Emily's argument for it was when you decide to package this and sell this. Yeah. She said... There would be so many people who would just want to do like wine nights and go all out with silly costumes like for creep show. That's true. And Emily seemed to think that sounded very enticing. That's true. Because I'm working on my bachelorette one right now. But this would be another good girls one. Mm -hmm. Mm, That's a good idea. So that was my dreadful dilemma this week. I was really torn. And I have had a few listeners ask me about them. If you want to buy a murder mystery, it is Mandy's Mysteries on Etsy. So check it out. Yes. And you guys can still vote on it and see what you guys think it should be. I still really do want to know what the people have to say. Yeah. Just because I gave a compelling reason doesn't mean I uh, swayed her decision. Totally. I love them both. Mm -hmm. I think eventually I will do them both. But it's like, what is now? What am I doing this year? You know? And also another shameless plug, guys. Please go check out our merch. I know we have talked about it. For God, how long now? Like blah, freaking blah. But Too like, long. Please check it out. It's so cute and so comfy. And OMG, I love the pictures of Trevin that we got. We actually took them the day of this recording and I am <laughs> so thrilled. And I'm still a little rattled. <laughs> so Trevin, should we jump on in to our two truths and a lie? We shall. I've got three wires. Which one do I cut? I'll give you two truths and a lie. But wait, we don't have time for this. So, remember when I just gave a description about what our segments are usually like? Yes. (laughs) I'm switching that up, okay? I'm switching it up just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. Usually the segments are more fact-based, but I'm going to switch this one up slightly this week, okay? Two lies and a truth. Nope. I'm going to do two truths and a lie, but it's going to be personal petty crime past version okay Okay, so bear hold on with me maybe we need a new name for it it's all good but listen up i'm going to give you three criminal acts two of them are true that i've done and one is a lie and i want you to guess okay are you ready trevin i've edited a lot of your story so i know your crimes i know but these are not anything that i have talked about that i remember Maybe I have. There's one that I'm thinking I could have maybe said in passing, but has nothing to do with any of the stories I've ever told. Okay. Okay. Crime number one, called a police officer a pussy. Crime number two, I have a somewhat attractive mugshot. And crime number three, I publicly urinated in a McDonald's bush. Right in the bush. (laughs) You seem like a public urinator to me. Okay, so you think that one's true. Which one's the lie, Trevin? I'm going to say you don't have a somewhat attractive... Ah, you got it! (laughs) I don't have a mugshot. Honestly, it's probably a good thing that that's a lie. Mm -hmm. But if I ever did have a mugshot, I would want it to at least be somewhat attractive. Yeah. You know? I wouldn't want it to be like a lazy eye situation. Or you're blinking or puking in the middle of it or something or there's pepper in my teeth you know i guess i maybe wouldn't be smiling i don't know what i would do in that situation i usually don't attempt crimes (laughs) after eating steak so i don't think you have to worry about the teeth thing (laughs) uh well i just wanted to switch it up a little bit just because kind of like i was saying we haven't done like a lot of personal stories and Mm -hmm. i know i've kind of told a little funny thing here or there and i was like i kind of just want to switch it up and not do a fact thing yeah that's a fine thing yeah calling a cop a pussy totally sounds like you yeah even though you don't like the word famously from that one story i do not like the word okay i was just very upset that i was being accused of a crime when there were real people out there committing them you poor thing (laughs) 
<laughs> but yes, I did do that. And, you know, when the McDonald's inside part is closed and you really got to go, mm-hmm. you got to do it. Yeah. There's I, something I, about your face that just says, <laughs> oh, like you're an I piss in public. <laughs> Tell us in the comments if you agree. <laughs> no, seriously. I need to make merch. I piss in public. <laughs> I'll wear it. That's, that's actually fine. a fun idea. I don't want it to say I shit in public because that's a fear, but yeah. I'll do the pee. Well, I've got one for you, and I'm not breaking or bending any rules. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. I really am sorry, guys. I was on a level. I really need to tone it down. And because of my new obsession with what I started last week's episode with, okay, I want to do two truths and a lie about my new pal, Barbie. <laughs> oh, yes. So statement number one, Barbie's yellow lab, Tiffany was discontinued after the creator's dog tragically died. Statement number two. Barbie was originally modeled off of a pornographic doll. Or statement number three. One clothing set came with a diet book accessory called Don't Eat. Oh my god. Duh. (laughs) Don't eat. I think you're trying to mess with me, Trevin. I'm going to go with C is the lie. You're going to go with C is the lie. And you are incorrect. Damn it! Which one? The lie is about the yellow lab, Tiffany. I was going to say that one. So, coming to you from Newsweek.com, they had a great little thing about Barbie. Before she won the heart of little girls across the nation, Barbie was modeled off of a German novelty doll in 1952 called Build Lily. That's B-I-L-D space L-I-L-L-I. For any of you that that need this doll in your life. Yeah. (laughs) Build Lily was, quote, a high-class call girl from the comic strip called Build Zietung. It's a German word. Okay. Lily's likeness was found in bars and tobacco shops rather than toy stores. So when Ruth Handler, the inventor of Barbie, took a vacation to Switzerland, she actually saw this Build Lily in the window and said, this is the thing. She was also made with kind of bigger proportions to have a bigger bust and be like a cartoony, very sexist version of a woman. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the whole joke in Germany. So then she took the idea basically almost exactly just toned down some of her features and just made her. Wow. And the guy who created it threatened to sue Mattel and was like, hey, you totally stole my idea. But it turned out that he had actually sold the copyrights in some earlier case or something. Oh, no. So he embarrassed himself a little bit and lost. Also, yes, it is true. She did have a slumber party Barbie set in 1965. Came with a scale. No. That's permanently set to 110 pounds. No. And a diet book that says don't eat on the front of it. That is infuriating. Are you kidding me? No. Ah, I was hoping that was the lie. But the pessimist in me was kind of thinking that's the one. I just really thought you were tricking me. Oh, God, I hate that so much. She debuted in 1959. Wow. So, I mean, it makes sense. (sighs) How the times have changed. I mean, my daughter now, she's playing with Barbies and dolls that are all shapes, sizes. I mean, shoot. She even has one doll that's a Monster High Barbie doll. It's not even human anymore. Like, they're that diverse. Wow, it's a pothead Barbie. (laughs) It just got Monster High. (laughs) Oh, my God. I can't. Ugh, that's so bad. It's sad. But I could see it, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it's not at all surprising. Oh, man. Well, I think we need to switch things up a bit and bring the attitude back up yes. after that really gnarly Barbie fact. So how about we check out some ads? Yeah. You want to buy something? This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. I know I personally felt this way right after I had my kids and I was deciding whether or not I should be going back to work or what I should be doing. Lately in therapy, for me, I've been working on being present within my body and my physicalness. Sometimes I get a little too caught up in my own head and I don't pay attention to the things or sensations that my body is going through. And therapy has really helped me be a lot more present with myself and enjoy life more. If therapy sounds like a good fit for you, give BetterHelp a try. It's online and convenient to your schedule. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. 
Visit BetterHelp.com slash Live Laugh today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Live Laugh. Bye. See ya. And we're back. So, Trevin, I'm going to be telling my story first this week. And this is a story from the news. What is interesting about this one is... I've had this concept in my mind for a few months now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been brewing and I needed to find a crime that specifically fit what I needed. And luckily for us all, I found it. Ooh, I'm ready for that. I love when you have a conceptual one that you hold on for a while. Yes, I needed to do this. It was something that gripping to me. So here we go. When you are processing a weighty life decision, what voice do you turn to for advice? Is it your conscience, a higher power, or your always reliable and robotic Alexa system? You should dump his sorry ass, girlfriend. Regardless of where your wise voice comes from, we all have some sort of inner dialogue before making big choices. I know I sure do before making moderate Amazon purchases or ordering out food for the third time that week. But what happens when instead of a single voice guiding you towards the path of righteousness, you had a competing voice, a diabolical voice, urging you towards a treacherous trail of pettiness? Colin was a seemingly lovely woman in her early 60s and going strong. She kept herself busy as she had recently taken a position as an administrative assistant at Arlington Free Methodist Church in Washington State. Colin was organized, prompt, and always brought in fresh baked goods to the church congregation. Let there be muffins. But beyond her neat appearance and scent of brown sugar, there was something off about Colin. To her, This ominous feeling about her character was no mystery. She knew the demons she carried and the daily struggle she felt within. Colin experienced an inner battle of morality and dignity on a regular basis. This was because she had not one inner voice, but two. Projecting loudly from either side of her head, Colin had an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other. These drastically different voices echoed and argued in Colin's mind over a variety of life's conflicts. Eating lunch at her favorite local cafe was a common spot for these noisy moments due to the fact that she went there often for the delicious croissants and left feeling personally offended by the condescending waitstaff. I'm surprised you didn't eat the whole plate, you little piggy. When it came time to pay her bill, the angel and devil rivals popped up immediately. I just love the smell of those buttery croissants in the morning. Pay these people whatever they ask. The angel would exclaim, while the devil interrupted. Ha! The only thing these punk servers deserve is a zero dollar tip, one star review, and two backhands to the face. Cullen often found herself with whiplash, trying to acknowledge both sides of the argument and usually ended up doing an awkward medium response. For example, leaving a decent tip and a bad review only to repeatedly show up to the same cafe each morning. Why do you keep coming here? Unfortunately, this conflicting inner discussion also occurred at her job in the Methodist church. Although Colin wanted to make good choices, the multiple strong opinions battling from each shoulder were overpowering her judgment. As the administrative assistant, she had access to bookkeeping documents, such as donation totals, church utility bills, and the church's checkbook. At the beginning of every month, Colin found herself holding the checkbook as her angel and devil appeared. Money, money, money. 
the devil squealed in one of her ears. Now, now, we've gone over this before, the angel calmly relayed. Think about the cost of snacks for vacation Bible school or the expensive GPS tracker used to protect baby Jesus in the nativity scene each Christmas. The angel made valid points, but the devil never went away without a fight. Less talking, more shopping. Come on, we deserve this. The ornery voice shouted in defense. This would lead Colin to scribble out a check for $2,000, signing it with her pastor's forged signature. This battle went on for years, three long and deceitful years to be exact. The pattern remained the same, starting with the angel pleading with Colin to be good, yet always ending with a victorious and slightly richer devil. Over time, however, the finance chairman of the church had grown suspicious. Hmm. He had noticed some strange irregularities with the church checkbook, and all signs led back to Colin. The chairman then alerted the pastor, who then called an emergency meeting with all the church elders. After explaining his theories of the theft to the group, the church halls were filled with noisy outrage. I always wondered about that woman. I never thought she actually swallowed her communion bread, shrilled one elder. This is like Judas all over again, boomed another. But before any action could be taken by the angry elders, the pastor received a call from the local PD. From January 2005 until February 2008, 62-year-old Washington woman, Colin Oakson, wrote 80 checks to herself from the Arlington Free Methodist Church where she worked. The total amount she received over the course of the three-year theft was $73,575.18. When speaking to the detectives, Colin explained that she used the money to cover household expenses because she couldn't stand the thought of losing her home. She also further defended herself, stating that she guessed that Satan had a big part in the theft. Colin was fired from her administrative assistant job at the church in February of 2008 and was charged with a felony of first-degree theft. The next time you are faced with a weighty life decision, I urge you to listen to your angelic voice of reason because the devilish temptations are simply not worth the eternal pettiness that follows. I cast thee into a lake of hellfire for this. <laughs> I mean, they probably wanted to. Wow, how unchristian. $73,000, that is a lot of money. And I'm not a mathematician, but I did some math and that would be like she was stealing $2,000 a month consistently for three years straight. I wouldn't even work if I could make $2,000 a month. I know! I mean, I don't know what rent is up in that neck of the woods, but mm -hmm. come on, Colin. You said it was like 80 checks, 82 checks or 80 something? 80 checks. How does that many checks even get written and not get caught earlier? So usually I save, you know, a lot of the facts for the wrap up at the end now is kind of how we do. But mm -hmm. everything that I said, other than the fact that she literally had a devil and angel and anything about her personality, mm -hmm. every other thing was exactly how it happened, according to the reports. So apparently the financial guy caught on to her. He called the pastor. They had this elders meeting. I made up all the lines in the elders meeting because mm -hmm. I thought that would be funny, but they really had this meeting and right as the elders, whatever the hell that means, even the elders in the church just gather around. They have elders. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it's almost like a council of elders sort of thing. Okay. So they were all gathered and they're all talking smack on this woman. And I mean, I don't know if the call came in during the meeting, like I wrote it, but they stopped their findings because the police had already been notified somehow or found out about it and they were already working on a case. Oh, so, wow. Wonder who tipped them off. I know. I couldn't find that information anywhere. 
Actually, a lot of the articles didn't even say her name, and I originally thought that it was a typo in one of the articles because Colleen is a typical woman's name. I've mm-hmm. never seen it spelled like this, C-O-L-L-E-N, but hey, whatever. You don't know if it's Colin or Colleen. I know. I'm like, could it be Colleen with just one E? Maybe, mm-hmm. but I don't know. I've just never seen that before. I did like your concept for this. Yeah. We've never, I don't think I've ever done a devil and an angel. I've done where the dude had the fake passenger in his car speak to him, like his moral conscience speaking to him. (laughs) But I like the devil and angel thing. When you were kind of hung up, you said you didn't know what voice to do for the the (laughs) devil. And I was like, oh, I do like a kind of voice. (laughs) Because the idea of an angel and devil on your shoulder to me just screams such old cartoon thing to do yeah like a bugs bunny or oh my gosh who's on with the big red mustache oh god yosemite sam okay yeah 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 they just always did that and so i thought oh you should go like old school cartoon yeah voice no that was that. a great one i didn't really want to do like a traditional demonic voice you know mm. i wanted it to be hard but funny <laughs> But yeah, the reason that this concept, so I have it written in my phone notes, like I want to do, like I have a whole like story concept, like idea thing. So I was like, devil and angel on the shoulder. And so I was looking up crimes where people blame the devil, but of course it's like the worst crimes on the face of the earth. But after some digging, I found this one. That was a quote. She guessed that Satan had a large part to do with the theft, is what she said. Wow. I do like that she blames Satan and, and works for the church. And yeah, it's too perfect. I totally get why you did it. Yeah. And I'm surprised she didn't try to say possession. Yeah, seriously. She could have. <laughs> if she's letting the devil make her decisions, I think she should lose her title. Exactly. I just thought the crime itself was weird and it fit what I wanted. So it worked out for me. But yeah, to be so ballsy as to do this for three years is wild. I just can't even believe that she could keep it up for that long. Yeah. As far as not getting caught. And it's another one where I've maybe only done one or two others where it was technically a felony crime, people. I know I did that with the wine one Mm -hmm. way back when. But, I mean, it's still petty behavior, so I had to. Yeah, I'm not afraid of a felony as long as it's not, like, (laughs) super harming a person. Is that a shirt? I'm not afraid of a felony. (laughs) That needs to be one, too. Damn. We have merch on the brain, okay? Yeah, we do. Well, I enjoyed that. That was great. And I have a story for everybody that is listening right now. Before you say that, can I just say some behind the scenes making of the episode that a large thunderstorm is rolling in as Trevin is about to tell his story. Ooh, and the thunder just rolled right when you said that. The ambiance is off the charts. We'll see if I pick that up with the mic or not. (laughs) Which is actually great because I was going to say, I'm going back with my horror roots a little bit this week. Oh my God. And I am going to talk about something that's absolutely terrifying. The universe must have knew before (laughs) I got to tell this because it is super dark outside now. (laughs) It's very creepy. So let's use this creepy energy and see if I can scare the pants off a couple of you guys. And here we go. Throughout our lives, we have experienced fear on all kinds of levels. From the fear a baby feels, thinking their parents' face disappeared during a game of peekaboo, to the fear an adult feels when they forget to clear their browsing history. Everyone's gonna know I'm a pervert. There's life questioning existential fears, a jolt of surprise, the fear of the unknown, social fears, and so many more. No matter who you are, you've experienced each one at least once. Well, I'm here to tell you all that I've encountered a new kind of fear. Something so vile and impure that you are all willfully letting it destroy your lives. And you don't even care. I'm talking about the black mirror itself. TikTok. TikTok has turned your creepy niece into a famous dancer. This is how I twerk my butt. It reduces classic films into overused five second video clips. My wife. And it even makes me, a well-versed cool guy, sound out of touch and old. <laughs> Honestly, Any app with the power to do just one of these things should register as a terrorist organization. TikTok does all three effortlessly. It is the colossus of corruption, the mammoth of manipulation. And the worst thing about it all is I can't figure the fucker out. 
I come up with a nuanced bit to play out for a short video, learn some new editing techniques, and post. Only to receive 200 views and a comment from some random guy asking, what the fuck kind of name is Trevin? On the other side of the coin, a very beautiful person can hold up a piece of bread in a well-lit kitchen and just say, I'm having toast for breakfast. This video will climb in views, reaching into the millions, while that same guy that made fun of my name is on their video commenting, It's actually not toast until you toast it, so you should really say, I'm having bread for breakfast, since we never actually see you toast the bread. Anyway, you're cute though. You see, people don't want to see a middle-class white guy trying his best. They want to see a model share what they want for breakfast. Or at least, that's what the dreaded TikTok algorithm wants you to think. With the easy to scroll format and the short attention span nature in which the content is consumed, TikTok creators try everything from degrading themselves for the hate engagement like this video and I'll eat cat shit to trying psychological manipulation tactics to get people to watch them longer. And if you don't finish this video, you'll die tomorrow. It's an app drenched in desperation. Like the lottery, content creators release a video believing that this one could be the one while they're trying their best to quote Embrace the cringe. TikTok gurus, snake oil salespeople are making money off of these desperate creators by saying things like, be consistent, the next one could be it. And everything you're doing is wrong. My $5,000 course is the only way your work will get the virality that it deserves. Honestly, I'm already looking forward to the inevitable documentary about how TikTok hindered a generation. Anyway, besides being a weapon of mass distraction, TikTok can play a massive role in aiding petty criminals. I'm sure there'll be many more for us as the years go on. So let's just see what twisted turn TikTok takes this time. 12 year old Tim Schitz was a news station's perfect example of everything that's wrong with the youth today. He watched Twitch streams of reaction videos to Twitch streams. I love the way he watches stuff. He was constantly recording himself talking. I'm a very deep thinker. And he said things like dead ass and no cap. Tim fancied himself as a very hip guy in his seventh grade class, and for good reason too. Thanks to Tim's postmodern masterpiece, Armpit Farts and Horse Mask, he had really climbed the ranks of popularity in his Santa Rosa Beach, Florida school. In just under 40 seconds, Tim went from zero to hero, wearing a horse mask and making armpit farts in his mirror. With each poof of air that mimicked a butt muffin, Tim felt himself transforming from Chugi Lord to lean king. All of the other seventh graders wanted to duet with his videos, and his reactions became trending sounds within the school's walls. Shoutouts and tags were his currency, and all of the other tryhards were just begging for a tiny bit of what Tim had. But I guess that was a little bit ago. Unfortunately for Tim, TikTok giveth and TikTok taketh away. The attention span of the app does not yield continuous returns on content unless you're consistently creating and using the app. After taking a week off for his mental health, Tim had come back to the platform with less engagement and less views. The armpit farts video had stopped circulating. In his latest video, prank calling my sister and horse mask, completely bombed. Tim overlooked how the mask didn't actually enhance the prank. Although there was joy that came along with it, Tim had found himself directly in the middle of content creator hustle culture. Every day was a new chance to see what sticks, but each time he clicked post, he was greeted with nothing. No one cared. This was a very dark time in Tim's content creating career. He had the highest of highs, but was now experiencing an incredibly helpless low. The lack of views caused him to question himself and all of his instincts. Tim was willing to try anything if it meant getting the rush of a big video again. So with the stink of desperation on his soul, Tim decided to scare children for views. The plan was simple, hide in the bushes with a horse mask on, scare the kindergartners from the nearby Montessori school, and go viral. With a hidden camera placed in a nearby tree, Tim sat in the bushes and watched the six-year-olds approach the perfect spot for a scaring. But as they got closer, Tim couldn't help but hear what the children were talking about through the ear holes of his rubber horse mask. Oh boy, today's school day was so fun, one child said. Yeah, it's all because of coconut, another added. The children went on, 
talking about how talented and beautiful Coconut was. I'd never stop watching Coconut if I had access to him, the first child also said. In that moment, Tim changed his mindset from the low-hanging fruit of prank videos to something much more diabolical, exploiting someone else for his own gain. He quickly threw off the horse mask and approached the children. Excuse me, young children, Tim yelled to the kids. I couldn't help but overhear what you were talking about. Who is this magical coconut that you speak of? One of the kindergartners stopped on the sidewalk, turned to Tim, and transported them both into a montage of exposition. Since the dawn of about eight years ago, Coconut has been on this earth, spreading love and joy to all children that attend Mrs. Graham's five-year-old class. Coconut is kind. Coconut is pure. Together we, Coconut's children, split up the duties of feeding Coconut at an appropriate time and scooping her wood chips when they get too shitty. Hail Coconut! Another kid yelled before stepping back into the crowd of kindergartners. Anyway, we are Coconut's most loyal followers. Until we graduate up into the big kid school, we are forever in debt to the guinea pig known as Coconut. Good day to you. As the five-year-old turned to walk away, the rest of the children followed, creepily marching out of view. Loyal followers, huh? Tim said to himself. A collaboration with someone who has a lot of guaranteed followers could mean more followers for me, too. For the rest of that week, Tim collected blueprints, followed city bus stop schedules, and devised for the great coconut heist. Once Saturday night came around, Tim found himself picking a window's lock and climbing into Mrs. Graham's classroom. As he entered, he looked around and saw the class's shrine to coconut, along with their schedule for who performs what job that week. This must be some dope guinea pig, dead ass, Tim said to himself as he kicked over some desks to stage a break-in. But as he turned towards Coconut's cage, the rodent's heat lamp touched Tim's cheek, instantly sending a new kind of warmth into his heart. Oh, fuck. This furry little white and brown potato was the cutest thing he had ever seen. It had suddenly become clear why there was an entire Montessori cult all focused on worshipping Coconut. He was otherworldly. Sorry, nuts. It's just business, Tim said, as he scooped up the little ploof, threw him in his thieving bag, and escaped back out the window. The next morning, Mrs. Graham came in to see the ransacked room and the missing coconut. She lost her metaphorical shit as she called for the head of the school. Listen, these kids are five years old, the head of the school said. It should be a requirement to lose a pet before you graduate into the first grade. I think our little adults are more than capable of handling the loss of some silly class pet. Mrs. Graham accepted the expertise of her head of school as she approached her class. Excuse me, class? Your mascot for joy and symbol of hope, Coconut the guinea pig, has been stolen. Life is meaningless and existence is pain. <laughs> I'm going off the rails on a crazy train. The class disintegrated into a scene of unhinged kindergarten madness. As the head of school exited the room, leaving Mrs. Graham behind. Quickly walking down the hall, she pulled out her phone and called her secretary. Susan, I need you to make a sad Facebook post about coconut being stolen and call up all the internet sleuth PTA true crime moms. We need professionals on the case. While you're doing that, I'll call the cops. In no time, the Treehouse Episcopal Church Montessori School was flipped upside down. Police were collecting urine samples of nearby animals. Wine moms were interrogating any child who looked suspicious. And the Montessori students, known as Coconut's children, held a candlelit vigil on the school's front step. Come back, Coconut! While everyone was on high alert, one internet sleuth did the very brave and bold act of logging on the TikTok. Searching for guinea pigs nearby, the sleuth found one recently posted video. Huh, holding a guinea pig in a horse mask, huh? The sleuth's husband said, stopping by and reading her computer screen. Are you familiar with his work? The sleuth asked her husband. The husband took a sip of his coffee and looked out the window, overlooking his sprawling meadows. To understand the work of Tim Schitz is to understand the cycle of life altogether. Armpit farts and horse mask was his tour de force, but scholars would argue that he peaked too early 
reaching a level of fame incomprehensible to his 12-year-old brain. He was unable to keep up with the grind that it takes to be a serious TikTok content creator. The algorithm punched his ticket to fame town, and he blew it by being a one-note performer. Now he just desperately tries the same thing while disappearing into obscurity. So am I familiar with his work? That's like asking me if small dogs need to have their anal glands expressed. And I would give both questions the same answer. Yes, every three to four weeks. I can't go three to four weeks without thinking about the folly that is Tim Shit's unforgettable TikTok career. Just like you shouldn't go more than three to four weeks without manually expressing a dog's anal sacs. Just a little creeped out, the sleuth turned away from her husband and forwarded the TikTok to other leaders and family members of the town. In March of 2021, kindergarten classroom pet Coconut the guinea pig was pignapped from his cage at the Treehouse Episcopal Church Montessori School. According to sheriff's reports and school staff, the classroom had been ransacked and staged to look like a burglary. However, the only items stolen were coconut, his bed, and his food bowl. The Montessori School made a post on their Facebook asking for any tips people may have on his whereabouts. This post caused family members and staff of the school to turn to social media where they found a local 12-year-old boy posting videos of himself with Coconut. The school was able to obtain the boy's identity before reaching out to the police. Together, the school and sheriff's office went to the boy's home where Coconut was found safe. At the time of the article, the sheriff's public information officer stated that the unnamed boy would be charged with burglary. For a juvenile in Florida, being found guilty of a burglary charge could involve restitution, counseling, probation, or possibly even detention. The final verdict was not made public, nor was the kid's identity due to his age. It looks like we got our happy ending after all. I gotta say, when we had horse masks and child guinea pig colts, I really wasn't holding my breath for much positivity. Sure, our juvenile got in trouble, but if he truly isn't a bad kid, I'm sure it'll just be a funny story that he tells as an adult. But I can't say that we didn't dive into a little bit of a heavier subject matter with our ways of getting wrapped up in TikTok culture. Look out. TikTok can be a great way to promote things and show off different aspects of your life. But like any aspect of your lives, if you get too caught up in the measuring of success, you'll never be mentally present enough to see the good side of things. Whatever you make, make it meaningful and worthwhile to you. That way, if TikTok wants to be a dick and give you three views on your masterpiece, you can at least create a second account and watch your own video on it. If you're proud enough of your own work, you'll eventually give it a million views. Wow. We have had missing animals. I think that was way back, right? Like on a guest story? Yeah, it was a was it a turtle taken out of yes. a pet store? I think that was yes. PNW Hunts and Homicides did that one. But this feels personal. Yeah, I'll share everything that's true. Okay. So the horse mask thing was just me making a joke on how I always see those horse masks on TikToks. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I don't know what the kid posted because his identity was a secret. That's mm -hmm. why I named him Tim Shits. <laughs> With a Z, I'll let you know. <laughs> but yes, this Montessori school, the oldest the kids went to, I think, was five or six years old. This okay. kid was a 12-year-old kid. He did not go to this school. Okay. I don't know if maybe when he was five, he did go to that school. That I don't know. But for some reason, this kid got word that this magnificent guinea pig coconut lives at the Montessori school. And they said they don't know how he got in. I put in the story that he broke into the window. They even made it a point in the articles to say, we don't know how he got in. I don't know why he didn't just ask him after he got him, but yeah, he gets in, takes coconut, just takes his little food and his little bed or whatever, takes him back. Everybody's in a frenzy. They make a sad Facebook post. And then someone just happens to scroll and find a TikTok video of him holding coconut and just being like, look, I got a guinea pig. I'm a kid on TikTok. And then they were like, hey, capture this kid. And then they called the dad. The dad opened up the house. They found the guinea pig and the kid got in trouble. So did he hashtag it like guinea pig? I don't know. The hashtag stolen guinea pig? I mean, you can't just get on TikTok and be like, I need a radius of... Uh this many yards for guinea pigs in the area, you know? It could have been that maybe some other moms were like, hey, little Tim has been posting TikToks with guinea pig. I didn't that, know he had one. That could be too. That but could again, be too. I'm it's parents so not curious. at the same school, though, is the thing that's wild about it because he did not go to the Montessori school. Right. So it doesn't mean the parents all couldn't be friends somehow. It's just a crazy bunch of coincidences that led to that TikTok being seen because I put TikToks all the time and I don't think many people see them. <laughs> 
So <laughs> this kid to put out a TikTok and then have somebody who's actually looking for him see it. Right, right. That's just nutty. I'm sure there's got to be more to the story, of course, like there always is for mm-hmm. all of our stories that we don't know about. But I like to think that somehow he's connected to that school or I don't know, because how specific and weird. And so they never put out what his reasoning for taking the guinea pig was. Mm -mm. I just said that was because he was going for a TikTok fame thing, just like exploiting the piggy for the views because he had a cult. This is another thing. I had you read that line. Uh Uh-huh. They did make it a point in the articles, too, where the head of school had said, like, oh, we trust our kids to understand what it's like to lose a pet or something like that. It wasn't as bad as I had said, Uh where it's like you can't graduate kindergarten unless you've lost a pet. (laughs) But it did seem like this woman was giving these kindergartners a lot of credit. Yeah. To be like, oh, we'll just tell them that their favorite guinea pig's gone and that's life. Yeah. Yeah. In the articles, they said when the teacher told them, so it sounds like it was the head woman's idea, but the teacher woman had to be the deliverer of the bad Uh news. So that's why I wanted to make a big deal about that, too, because it feels like she just kind of led her astray to be like, just tell the kids that they lost their favorite pet. It's no biggie. It's fine. Yeah. If I was the teacher... I mean, I I felt that character role. Like, everyone is Mm -hmm. freaking out. You are a very sensitive, loving teacher, in my opinion. And you are just devastated, along with the kids. I had a lot of fun with that. And I also loved your child's monologue, where they were describing the lore that is the guinea pig. Oh, yeah. I didn't even realize. Like, I gave you a little mini monologue. Mm -hmm. I gave the cult children the monologue Uh and then i ended it on the sleuth's husband's monologue about the tiktoker yeah i didn't even realize i had done that i was feeling monologue last weekend i guess when i was writing i don't know but i kind of loved it and another thing that both of our crimes had in common yours was a church school mine was was a church so what congregations in crime Church of Crime, I don't know. There's got to be something there, Yeah, right? there's a lot. I mean, this is crime on a biblical level. <laughs> <laughs> Preach! <laughs> so, yeah, it's just all around buildings of faith. Yeah, wow, that is bizarre. We've never done that before. Yeah, as soon as you said the full name, I was like, oh, snap! So, what a connection and what a crime. That one really, really gripped me. I hope that everyone out there is having the best week. Yeah. And just remember that no matter the crime, big or small, in the end, we're all doomed. Doomed to express our dog's anal sacs every three to four weeks. (laughs) Bye. See ya. Thank you for being part of our congregation of crime. Thank you for listening, and please tell a friend about our show. And if you're about to spill that pipe and ass tea, you know where to find us. Live Laugh Larceny on all the socials, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and threads. I'll put an ad out. I'll do it. And if you have ever been a public urinator in a McDonald's bush, send us your petty crime story. Live Laugh Larceny at gmail.com. And give our show the same rating. Coconut's children would quote Coconut's beautiful and divine power. Five stars across the board. Apple, Spotify, or Good Pods. Just like you shouldn't go more than three to four weeks without manually expressing a dog's anal sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to say that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, Trevin. You've taken it too far. Yeah.